Hello everybody. In this Rhino video demo, I would like to show how we can use paneling tools to create patterns on a surface from a proliferated base object that can be modified by a curve attractor as illustrated on screen. Okay, let's start. The first thing we need to do is to ensure that we already have paneling tools installed and if you have not done so, you might want to go to the command prompt and type package manager and search for paneling tools and click on install to have it installed. I've already done it so I'm not going to do the installation again. I'm going to click the cancel. Okay, and I'm going to open up Grasshopper and what I want to do is to associate this base surface to the Grasshopper's B-Rap component. I'm okay, going to do a right mouse click, set one geometry, okay, and now I want to create the, the base grid. To do that, I can go to the paneling tools, grid, and select the appropriate grid creation type. In this case, I think I want to use the surface domain number and plug this here. And maybe let's give some number to the U and V uh, number input. Maybe something like that first. Okay. Um. I also would like to associate the object to be morphed with a grasshopper component. So I'm going to go to param geometry, put in a geometry component, and then. Set one geometry to associate this to, to this, and maybe I will want to rename this as a base geometry. Okay, now let's go to the paneling tools and select the appropriate panel 3D type. Okay. In this case, we will need to use the Morph 3D list. Okay, I'm going to put this here. And as you can see over here, there are like certain uh, inputs that are required for the proper execution to get the curve attractor to work. And let's start by creating the, the grids, okay? grid 1 and grid 2. Okay? As we already have a base uh, grid, we need to modify it using an attractor. To do so, go to the grid attractors and select um, the appropriate one. In this case, is the curve attraction. I'm going to put this here. And I've already created the curve. It's this one over here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is um, let's associate this curve to this uh, curve attractor socket okay and let's go to param curve okay right click set one curve associate this to this already and then connect this here maybe I think I want to rename this as a attractor curve Okay. Okay, I need to put a magnitude slider. So I think I can uh let's just uh, set from zero to let's say I'm not, not sure maybe two. Set this to floating point. Maybe one decimal point will do. 
gonna plug this here. Okay, as for the grid, okay, we need to connect the, the base grid to this input socket. Okay, connect here, and this will modify the grid based on the attractor curve that has been uh, inputted. Okay, and now um, let's create an offset grid. Okay. That will eventually be connected to the grid two socket. Okay, so go to paneling tools, grid utility, offset. Grid. I'm going to plug this here, and for the P-wrap, connect to the original base surface. We need to set the the distance for the offset. So I guess let's create a number slider again. Maybe zero to six. Okay. Be higher, maybe something like that. Okay. Now we can um, connect the grids. Okay. As this this will be grid one. So I'm going to connect this grid one the offset third uh, the offset grid will be connected to grid two and then the weight will be the weight from the curve attraction node okay and now let's um, put in the pattern object okay the pattern object will be the base geometry so I'm going to connect this to this, I hope that you work. Oh, great! Um, we got some output, but apparently the result is not very obvious. So let's make a bit of uh, change to see whether we can improve the result. Yeah, you can see. Yeah, by, by changing the, the mag magnitude, we can play with the, the strength of the attraction. I think I want to bring this value a bit higher so we can see uh, the result better. Yeah, you can see that the attractor is actually mm, influencing the shape and the size of the base base object okay what what if um you want the base object to not be modified too extensively but rather be confined to a certain size parameter to do that we can Add another constraint which is the bounding object okay which I'm going to show you how we can do it okay basically what I can do is you can create a bounding box over here by using the the box command okay something like that Make sure that the, the bounding box is um, encapsulating the 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 ob object, okay, in a certain axis, okay. So now let's associate this box to uh, grasshopper. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to geometry. Put a geometry node. I'm going to do a right mouse click. Set one geometry. Okay, and maybe I will just name this as well as um, bounding box or bounding bounding shape. Okay. And then we need to connect this to the bounding object. Okay. Yeah. Now I can see. 
that we have sort of uh, constrained the um, the base shape to a specific boundary instead of the base shape are more uh, connecting close to each other in this case they are like constrained to certain uh, boundary as uh, dictated by the the bounding object okay? okay with that I come to the end of this demo hope that's been useful see you bye